Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Praise the Lord. If you have it, say, I got it. Praise the Lord. This is what the Bible says. It says, and without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. One more time. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Father, one more time, I pray you anoint my heart, my lips, Lord, to deliver your message. I pray, Father, it will be with the anointing of your Holy Spirit. You touch every heart that is here today, Lord. Let us learn something today and let us be touched by your presence, by your power. And we give you thanks today in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated here this morning. Praise the Lord. The subject of faith is so vital and so important for all of us to understand. It is critical for every one of us to really not only understand it, but to walk in it. To walk by faith in God. It is clearly here in Hebrews 11 verse 6, he says that, Without faith, is impossible to please God. So, it means that every one of us must operate, must have faith to be able to please God. We must live our lives by faith in order to please God. Anything short of that will not please God. This is what the Bible is saying here. So that's why faith is so vital and so important for all of us to understand it. And throughout this entire month, I'm going to do my very best to be able to bring out in clarity what faith is really all about. And what God says about faith and how we operate in faith as well. So I'm going to begin to do some uh, lay a foundation for this next few Sundays, praise the Lord, and I believe that God is going to do something amazing in all of our lives. First of all, the first thing I want to say for everyone that is here, especially those that are new, that are visiting us here today, I want to let you know that it is biblical here, and we will see it, that God has given every person a level or a, or a measure of faith. That's the first thing I want to let you know, according to the Bible. Number one, God has given every person a level of faith. See, this is the reason why no one, no one can say, I don't have any faith. God didn't give me any faith. Because the Bible is clear in Romans 12, 3. You can write it down, or you can read it with me. But Romans 12, verse 3. He says, for I say, through the grace given to me, this is the Apostle Paul who is writing this, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. Meaning that every one of us, God loves us so much that He Himself has deposited inside of every one of us a measure of faith. Everyone in this world, not just us here in the church, but those that are outside of the church. Every person even out in the street somewhere, God has placed a level, a measure of faith within the heart of every person on the planet earth because God loves us he has placed that placed that within our hearts the Bible says in Ephesians 2 and verse 8 Ephesians 2 verse 8 he says for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith and this faith is not from yourselves it is the gift of God 
It is a gift. You didn't do nothing to receive it. God created us and God gave it to us freely. He deposited a gift of faith inside every one of us. A measure of faith inside of everyone as well. Faith, in other words, is a gift from God. And everyone has it. Glory to God. You can look at your neighbor and say, man, you got full of faith. You're full of faith. Come on, say, you are full of faith. I know, I know, I know. It sounds a little funny because, you know, we walk outside of these walls and everybody tells you you're full of everything else. Well, here in the house of God, it's okay to say you are full of faith. Come on now. Look at your neighbor and say, you are full of faith. What did you say? No, I'm just kidding. Amen. That's what the Bible tells us. That every one of us have been given a measure of faith. Because God is giving us a measure of faith, it is our responsibility to polish it up. Hello. To polish it up. You see individuals that operate at this level, this level, that level of faith. Well, it's just a matter of getting the faith that we have and begin to polish it up because that's what God gave it to us for. So that it, it, it can grow. Faith grows. And we're going to see that in just a minute. Number one thing you need to know here this morning, if you are young, if you are younger, hello somebody. What you need to know this morning is that everyone on the planet earth has been given a measure of faith by God himself. No one can say, well, I don't have no faith. God didn't like me. And I, I don't go to church because I don't have no faith. I don't believe in God because I don't have no faith. God has placed a measure of faith in that person who says, I know there is no God. I don't believe in God. There's a measure of faith that God has placed even in that person. Even though they choose to deny it. It is God himself, and he is not a man that he shall lie, the Bible said. In other words, what he wrote here, it is true that he has given a measure of faith to every individual on the planet Earth. Now, there are different levels of faith. <coughs> there are different levels of faith. The Bible talks about small faith, the Bible says, talks about that. You can write that down, the different levels of faith. Small faith. In Matthew 8, verse 26, Jesus replied, You of little faith, you of little faith, why are you so afraid? Then he got up and rebuked the wind and the waves, and he was completely calm. This is one in, an instance when the disciples were with him in a boat. The Bible says that they were in a boat, and and then the wind started coming, and it was like a storm, and, and, and they were afraid. And they went and tell Jesus, we're going to die. Just like any of us would do. Hello, somebody. It doesn't look good, man. We're going to go down. Jesus got up, spoke to the water, spoke to the wind, and he says, it, 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 it was completely calm when Jesus spoke to it. And then he says to them, you of little faith. Hello, somebody. So God identifies little faith. And little faith, he says here, simply because prior to that, the reason why they were on this boat on the way to the other side of where they were going, on this lake, is because Jesus had told them, let's go, get on the boat, let's go to the other side. So when Jesus said, let's go to the other side, that means that no matter what the devil wanted to do, the storm, the wind, the water, wanted to do, they were going to get to the other side. Because when Jesus says we're going to the other side, it's a done deal. You can take it. You can go through the storms. Whew, I'm going to preach right about here. You can go through all kinds of stuff in your life, but when Jesus has given you a promise, if you stay with Jesus and don't give up, if you are not afraid and run away from God, in the midst of your storms, if you stay with Jesus, the promises of God will come to pass within your life. 
Jesus says, let's go to the other side. <coughs> Storm came, and they're all freaking out. Jesus, Jesus, you are asleep right now. Don't you know we're dying? We're going to drown. Jesus got up and it says, water, be cool. Wind, stop it. And both of them, real common, says, you have little faith. I'm going back to sleep. They, they were doubting, they were doubting what Jesus says was going to happen. They were doubting the word of God. They believed that what Jesus says was, in other words, was not true. They believed the wind and the, the situation and their circumstance instead of what Jesus had told them. Jesus said, this is a little faith. You ever go through that? I think we've all been through that. Some of you are still there. And it's okay. That you see your situation, you see your circumstances, and you're like, ah, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm not going to make it. I can see the wind blowing. Look at the water. Look at the bills. <laughs> what's going to happen? Oh, my God. We begin to kind of doubt what Jesus said that he was going to do. But you're in good company. You're in good company. The greatest men and women on the planet that have walked with God have all, or the majority of them, have given an account time and time again or different situations on how they even suffer from depression. Hello, somebody. Because of the stuff that they went through or that they've been through. And I want to let you know that you and I face some situations that are difficult in our life. And you will continue to face those difficult situations because we are in a world that is collapsing. We are in a place in this world that is full of sin and death and decay. And because of that, we are going to experience some of those things. And it is through those times and in this dark world that Jesus wants us to shine. That Jesus wants us to walk by faith and live by faith so that we can completely show the world that in the midst of darkness, we can still serve a God who is an awesome, powerful, and faithful. Come on. Somebody need to give him praise. He is an awesome God. He is faithful. His word is true. Small faith. We all been there. We all done that. But also there's another level of faith the Bible talks about. The Bible says that there's also great faith. In Matthew, Matthew 8, verse 5 through 8, the Bible says, When Jesus had entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him. This is like a, a, a commander in, the, in an army. A centurion came to him asking for help. Lord, he said, my servant lies at home paralyzed, suffering terribly. Jesus said to him, shall I come and heal him? The centurion replied, Lord, I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. But just say the word and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man of under authority. In other words, I have uh, uh, people I, I have to answer to. I'm under authority. But I also have soldiers under me. I got people under me. I tell this, this one, go, and he goes. And I tell that one, come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed and said to those following him, Truly I say to you, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. This man comes and says, my servant is dying at home. He said that it was like a day or two journey to where his servant was dying. When he comes to Jesus, Jesus says, okay, let's go. Let's, let's start walking so I can, I can heal him. The guy says, no, 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 no. You, you don't have to go, Jesus. I'm not worthy of you 
the Son of God coming into my house. But I know that you're a man that has authority. And I know how authority works, how it operates. I'm a man under authority, so I know I got to do what my commanders tell me to do. But I also have other soldiers under me, and they do whatever I command them to do. Because that is authority. That's what he does. I got power. I got authority. He says, I know and I recognize you that you are the son of God, that you have authority and power over all things. All you need to do, Jesus, what I want you to do is say the word right here, and my servant, even though he's two days away, he will be healed over there. Jesus says, wow. I walked all over the chosen people of God in Israel, all of the entire nation, all of the entire city, Jerusalem. I walked everywhere on the chosen people of God, and I have not seen one person with such great faith as this man right here. That's great faith. Now, as you continue to read that story, you, you, you know, Jesus prays, and the centurion goes home. He says that when he was on his way home, there was a servant, another one of his servants that came, was coming his way, and the servant says, Master, I want to let you know that so-and-so that was sick and ill and dying, he's been healed. And he says, he says, really, he says, when did that take place? And the servant told him the time when he got healed. It was the same time when Jesus prayed two days away journey. Come on now. Come on. That's, that's power from God. That is power from God. But the centurion had the faith to believe that if Jesus said it over there, his servant was going to be healed at home where he was. That's great faith. And throughout this month, we are going to be able to see on the different areas and, and what God says because we want to be the kind of people that operates at this great level of faith for our families, for our church, for our city, for the honor and the glory of God. Great faith. Give the Lord a good, good praise for that. Thank you, Lord. <coughs> Now, there's another level of faith where the Bible calls it dead faith. Dead faith. We don't want to operate there. Hello, somebody. Small faith is, is, is all right. You know, we can, we, can, we can continue to grow in our faith. But dead faith needs to be resurrected. <laughs> it's dead. James 2, verse 26. This is what he says. He says, as the body without the spirit is dead, as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. This is dead faith. It's a somebody that says that they believe in God, but there's no action. In their lives is dead faith. What? He's really saying if your faith doesn't move you to action, your faith is dead. Ay, 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 that hurt. Woo! Don't get up and walk out. It's gonna be alright. We're gonna we're gonna pray. But he's saying here in the Bible that as the as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. See, in order to show or to prove your faith and my faith in God, there has to be action. There has to be something that we're doing. There's something that is done to be able to display faith in God. It is faith. It's not works. It's not. The, the, we don't do works so that God can, can be pleased, so that God can love us. We do works, action of faith because faith pulls that out of you. It is out of love for God and it's faith in God that pulls you to do something. Come on now. It, is, it gets you to be active and doing something because I believe in God. I have faith in God. I have faith that he went to the cross 
First of all, that he is the son of the living God. That he is the perfect sacrifice that was willing to pay for all of my sins and all of our sins. And because of that, he went to the cross. He loved me enough to do that. He resurrected from the dead. He's at the right hand of the Father forever interceding for us. It's out of all that that I never had a chance to change. I never really, I, I was never, I, I, I wouldn't have a chance to be behind a pulpit. I wouldn't have a chance to, to, to be married to, to, to my wife because, you know, we were divorcing when we came to the Lord. We were, we were at a point where it was over. Our life of sin was destroying us and my family. So when you begin to understand what God has done for you, then out of that sense of gratitude and thankfulness and believing and trusting God, and you are the one who did this, Lord. You're the one who saved us. You're the one who changed our lives. Out of that gratitude, you begin to not only I have faith in you, I love you, Jesus, and do nothing about it, but Jesus, I know who you are, I know your heart, I know what you want in this world, and I'm here, Lord, to be able to let you know that you can use my life, you can count on me, God, you can call me, God, because I'm willing to do whatever, because my faith is greater, God. I love you, God. I'm grateful, God, for everything that you have done and everything that you are doing, and I'm willing to do, I'm willing to go, I'm willing to do whatever you want me to do come on somebody need to give him praise <coughs> it is that type of faith that God is looking for dead faith says I believe in God but I'm not involved I'm not doing anything to show it I, I don't go tell people about you Jesus and, and, and you know I don't I don't I don't, I don't tithe. I don't contribute. I don't, okay, you, you love God. You have faith. Paul said it this way. He says, he says, show me your faith without any works. But I will show you my faith by the works that I do. Is this the way he put it? Paul put it that way. How can you prove your faith? By moving, doing something. Being faithful to God. Going the extra mile sacrificing our lives a little bit our way of life and things sacrificing even our resources when it's needed why because i got faith in god and faith says even though i sacrifice here i'm gonna be all right we're gonna be okay we're not gonna go under we're not gonna go down i'm not gonna die i'm gonna have i'm not gonna go without my god will supply all of my needs according to his riches. I go the extra mile. Why? I got faith. I believe that the God that resurrected from the dead is able to take care of the needs that I have in my life. Come on, somebody need to give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Dead faith says, yeah, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. Oh, uh, no, I don't go to church. Oh, I go to church sometimes. Oh, no, 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 no. They, 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 they just want to take your money. I don't give. All this stuff that comes that the world thinks. And, and, and faith according to the Bible. Now, I'm speaking truth to you. I'm speaking truth to you from the Word of God. Because I want you to learn this. This can save your life, your soul. This can save your future, your marriage. Your, everything can save you. When, when, when we allow God to come in, teach us the truth, and then we follow it. We apply it. I can lie to you and, and, and give you just, you know, hey, sugarcoat this thing and make you feel good. I know I'm telling you the truth. If you get, if you get a little, uh, 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 that's right. Because the truth, maybe those are areas that you need to make some adjustments. Maybe change it. Maybe start doing something different. So that your life, you're going through stuff and you don't know why you can't get breakthroughs in this area, that area. Maybe you need to make some adjustments. Maybe you need to really start following certain things that the Bible gives us. And order will come into, order will come into your house. Come on now. How many need order? Not only in the house. Maybe we need some order in our head, in our minds. Order. When God comes in, when the truth comes in, he begins to put things in order. 
honor, in your marriage, in your life, in your relationships, in your money, in every area. But God has to be established in your life and in my. Come on, somebody need to give him praise. Some people walk around, they don't know if they're coming or they're going. Their life is a mess. And you try to speak truth to them. I can't believe it. I'm not coming to church again. Why, brother? Uh, that guy that was talking over there. Man, I'd rather go with my co-workers, man. They don't, they don't talk to me like that. Oh, no, no, no. They, they probably all walk into the same place. Ay, 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 ay. Don't hold hands with these people. Receive it. Ask God, God, what area do I need to change? Oh, God changed me, man. I'm still changing. When I came in, I was all twisted. Hello, somebody. Looking at things from, man, I, I was just completely, my relationship with my wife was completely messed up. I didn't know how to be a husband. I didn't know how to have a relationship. I didn't know how, any of this stuff. I thought, I thought, I thought it was this way. And then when God and the pastor and everybody started teaching, I'm like, heck no, heck no, heck no. Nah, I don't know about that. And little by little, I said, man, let, let, me, let me see. I'm, I'm going to try it. Maybe there's, there's some to it. And I, and, and I said, okay, I'm going to try it the way he, he's saying, that the Bible's saying, because I, I went and I searched it, and, and that's what he says. He wasn't lying. That's what he says in that book. I tried it, and man, I said, whoa, I, ne I never got this back from my wife like this. Hello, somebody. She never, she, wow, she's nice to me. Wow. You know, you face certain situations, and then you react, or you want to deal with it in a certain way, and you get a slap on your face, right? You get, you, you get like, what? And I wet that head. No, I'm just kidding. But when you begin to do it God's way, and you do it, deal with it that way, and you're expecting, see what happens. I'm going to deal with it God's way. Boom, you do it. Wow, thank you. She's like, oh, she said, thank you. Oh, my God. Why? I did it God's way for the very first time. I was used to doing it the way my dad showed me from a distance when he left my mother. Hello, somebody. I, 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 I was doing it the way my dad treated my, my mother before he left her. Hello, somebody. I was treating her the way that my homeboys told me that I should be doing it. Hello, somebody. It didn't work. It doesn't work. The ways of the world, the ways of the flesh, it doesn't work. So the only way it works is by having faith in God that what God says is true and then applying it and say, somehow I got to align my life, my marriage, my relationship in alignment with God. Because if I get in alignment with God, good things will follow me all of the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forevermore. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Can I tell you something? It works. It works. But you have to try it. And in order to try it, guess what is needed? Faith. Your flesh is not going to let you do it. Your flesh is going to be like I was. Heck no. A lie to me. That guy's lying. Stuff don't work. How can that work if I just do this? Try it. That's God's word. God's word. You try it, I, I promise you, it'll work. Now, let me do this. It may not work the first time. See, it didn't work. See that? See that? See that? You 
You got to try it again. It doesn't work the second time. You try it again. I can tell you, it works. And when it doesn't work the first time, oh, Jesus. The second time that you come and knock at the door to see if it's going to work this time, your faith is no longer here. It's here. I'm, I'm going to tell you to somebody. You thought you had a little bit of faith because you came and you did it God's way the first time. But when it didn't, it didn't work and you came back a second time, your faith had to be at this level for you to come back again even when it didn't work the first time. I'm giving something to you here this morning. Some of you need to come back and do it God's way again until it works because it will work in your life. And when it starts working, when it starts working in your life, you will begin to reap rewards that God has. For those that walk by faith, come on, somebody need to give him praise. My goodness. See, the good thing is not only that we have great faith and small faith and even dead faith. Great thing is that we can all grow in our faith. See, you can have very small faith, but your faith can begin to grow. To a whole new level. When I came in to, to, to the Lord, my faith was, was, was dead. God resurrected it. Resurrected it. And, uh, but even when I, when I started walking with God, my faith was very small. And now throughout the years, my faith has gone to a whole new level. Because your faith will grow. If you water it, hello somebody. You do the right things, your faith will continue to grow. In other words, we don't have to stay the same. You don't have to stay the same. God has greater things, better things, awesome things for every one of our lives. And that's the reason why he deposited faith with it inside of every one of us. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. God deposited faith into every human being because he desires that everyone will please him. Everybody's got the capability of doing it because we all have a measure of faith. Every one of us. See, God is good, man. He prepared us. He gave us the goods. It's in the house. Come on now. It's in the house. We can all grow in our faith, every one of us. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 3, it says, We always thank God for you, brothers and sisters, and rightly so, because your faith is growing more and more. And the love, and the love all of you have for one another is also increasing. He says your faith is growing. We pray and we thank God for you because we know that you're not at the same level that you was last year. Hello, somebody. Your faith, we can see that your faith is continuing to grow. How do they know that the faith is growing? Because, again, maybe they were not acting it out. Maybe they were not, you know, performing any deeds according to their faith. But maybe now you're able to see their faith growing because now they're doing something that is visible. To be able to show their faith. James 1, 2 and 4, it says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. <coughs> Whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. And let perseverance finish its work. So that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Now, let me give you a couple of things about how your faith can grow. Real quickly. Because I know that we all want to grow in our faith, right? We want, we want to get to that level of faith, to that level where we will see results in our lives. God, God, God wants to give us some things. There are some things that God has prepared for you. That's why he gave you faith, a little bit of faith to every one of us, so that we can polish our faith and grow in our faith to attain what God has for each and every one of us. The only way you're going to get what God has for you is to polish that faith to a level where you're able to reach it and grab the blessings that God has for your life. So how can my faith grow? 
Number one, the Bible tells us, it says, the faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So number one, that's Romans 10, 17. My faith grows by hearing the word of God. My faith grows by hearing the word of God. Not Dr. Phil. Hello, somebody. Not Oprah Winfrey. And not the Kardashians. It will not take place. Faith will grow by hearing the word of God. This morning, whether you believe it or not, since you got here an hour and 20, 30 minutes ago or so, your faith has increased from hearing the word of God. The word of God, the Bible says, is alive and active and is sharper than two, than two edged sword, than a double edged sword. It says it divides the bone from the marrow and it penetrates or it searches the deepest thoughts of the heart. You think that the word of God, that, that a, a sword and your, your uh, a steak knife is sharper? Uh uh. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that where knife cannot go, the word of God can penetrate. Hello, somebody. That's how sharp the word of God is. When you hear the word of God, that word goes deep into your heart, areas that you don't even know that are there. Maybe there's been things in your life where there's been some stuff that you carry. You don't even know that you've been affected by some things. But when you hear the word of God, the word of God begins to remove all those dead areas, all that stuff that was damaged, and God begins to heal your heart. Come on, somebody need to give him praise because God is a healer. When you hear the word of God, wonderful things take place. When you hear the word of God, we begin to grow. We begin to see life a little different, a little brighter. We begin to have a bigger picture of our tomorrow. Begin to trust that things are going to turn out in a positive way, not in a negative way. The fear that we come in about things that we're going through begin to disappear when the word of God comes in. That's why it's so awesome. To come to church, to hear the word of God, to put a CD or, or, or to put a sermon while we're on the road in our car. That's why it's important always hearing, listening to the word of God. That's why it's important get up early in the morning and read a chapter or read 10, 15 minutes of the word of God. So that it penetrates your mind and your heart. You go to work and you face all kinds of stuff. Can I tell you something? The devil is trying to take your faith. The devil is trying to bring you down. The devil is trying to get you to a place where you become a cripple in the area of faith but my God and the word of God will enable you will empower you will give you faith muscles that you can fight the enemy you can fight the enemy you can fight the devil and you can stay focused and finish the race because God will keep the faith alive inside of you come on somebody need to give him praise Hearing the word of God would allow you to grow. Secondly, and this one not too many people like. I don't like it myself. But it is the way that God has designed for us to grow. And that is through trials and tribulations. Trials and tribulations would help your faith to grow. According to the Bible. That's what James 1, 2 and 3 says. Consider it all joy or pure joy. My brothers, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And he continues on about the benefits of faith being tested. Your faith will be tested. And it will be tested through the trials and the tribulations that you may encounter or face in your lifetime. Things that you don't like, things that, you know, that challenge you, things that look impossible in your life. All of those things are only here to challenge your faith. Because when they challenge your faith and you choose to persevere in the midst of those trials, the Bible tells us there's great benefits. Your faith grows to another level and it produces perseverance or patience in your life. 
And then when you continue persevering and, and by faith and moving forward, there's other wonderful things that are provided for you as you keep the faith alive inside of your heart in spite of the difficult trials and situations that you may be facing. In other words, don't give up. Don't give up. God is going to turn it around. And you must begin to understand that God has a greater plan. Even in those situations and the trials that you may be going through today. God has a greater plan for your life. You are going to get to the other side. And when you get to the other side, you're going to be a much better man. A stronger woman for God. You're going to be a, a strong young man for God. A strong young lady for God. Your faith will be at another level because you was challenged. Your faith was challenged, but you endured that test. And the only thing that it did, it made you stronger for the honor and the glory of God. Come on, somebody need to give him praise. Come on, don't give up now. God is only strengthening you through the challenges that you encounter, that you face. So trials and tribulations will also grow our faith quickly i give you a couple of benefits of having faith in our lives when you have faith in your life there are some benefits hello somebody there's many but i think i only have time to give you just a couple of them first of all faith will not allow you to quit faith will never allow you to quit as long as you have faith faith will not let you give up faith will not i don't care how difficult it is I don't care what you encounter. I don't care what's going on in that family. I don't care what's going on with your children. Don't matter what's happening with your finances. Don't matter if we have the right clothes or we don't have anything except a, a pair of chanclas. Hello, somebody. I want to let you know you don't give up. As long as there's faith inside of you, you're going to keep on going. The enemy may hit you. You may have a black eye or a bloody lip, but you're going to keep on moving forward. Why? Because there's a burning faith. I still trust God that my God can turn it around and the God will work all things together for the good because I love him and he's going to turn it around late in the midnight hour. God is going to turn it around and he's going to bless my life regardless of all the trials. Come on, somebody need to give a praise. Come on, somebody need to give him a big shout. Say hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, give him a good praise. As long as you have faith, faith will not let you quit. In 1 Timothy 6.12, real quickly, don't go anywhere. This is good right here. 1 Timothy 6.12. Paul tells Timothy, fight the good fight of faith. And take hold of the eternal life to which you were called. Fight the good fight of faith. It's a fight. It's not going to come easy. You got you, you to gotta fight this good fight of faith. And then in 2 Timothy... Verse, chapter 1, verse 5 and 6 says, I'm reminded, Timothy, I'm reminded of your sincere, sincere faith, which first lived in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. Eunice. And I am persuaded, listen to that, I am persuaded now lives in you. Talking about faith. He says, your grandma had faith, your mother had faith, and now I see it all over you. You're a man of faith. He has come down to you. You are anointed by faith. And then he says in verse 6, For this reason, I remind you to fan the flame, the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hand. See, Timothy was, was a little confused. He didn't know if he could continue moving forward. He didn't feel that he was very effective in the ministry that God had called him to. He was a young minister, and he, he was a little insecure. The apostle Paul comes and says, man, your grandmother was so anointed. She has so much fire, so much faith. And you can see that, that your mother got it from her, and she was so full of faith. And he says, and you know, I've been watching you. Can I tell you something? 
in the same way that they, they had all this faith, I see it in you, Timothy. You're not going to give up now. You just need to fan the flame a little bit. You need to, you need to begin to fan the, the, the fire one more time. Don't give up. Keep on moving forward, Timothy. It's in you. You got it in you. You have faith. I see it. See, faith will never let you quit. He will never let you give up. In 1 Samuel chapter 30, a few verses there, it says, When David and his men in the Old Testament came to the city, they were out on the battlefield. They come back to their city, their homes. He says, When David and his men came to the city, behold, it was, a, it was burned with fire. And their wives and their sons and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him, the men, left their voices and wept until they had no more strength to weep. Hello? Have you been through something that you cry so much that you have no more strength to cry? That's where this guy was. He says, moreover, David, as a leader, he was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him, his own soldiers. Can you imagine that? He says, oh, this is this happening because of our leader. Oh, the pastor, man, I can't believe him. He's the pastor, man. He, he blew it, man. Made a mistake. I can't believe it, man. They were, they, they, they were blaming the leader. Hello, somebody. Moreover, David, David was greatly distressed because his soldiers spoke of stoning him, killing him. Some of you are saying, stoning him? Oh, that wouldn't be too bad. It is bad. It's bad. It's bad. So he was greatly distressed because people spoke of stoning him. His guys. For all the people were embittered, each one because of his sons and his daughters. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Then David said to Abiathar the priest, the son of uh, Amalek, Please bring me the ephod. Ephod was like this, uh, uh, it, it was a... Uh, what, what is it called? A, a vest, like a little vest that you put on. The, the, the priest will put it on like that. And he has certain stones in the front right here, like little stones. And you can go and ask God and those stones. God will minister to them and speak to them according to the color of the stones. It will change the stones. If it was a yes, it would turn a certain way. Let's just say, God, you want me to do this? And look at the stone. They turn green. Give him a green light. Hello, somebody. Hey, God, can I do this? Red, oh, don't go, stop. You know what I'm saying? That, that, that's that, that, that's uh, the, the, the original uh, stoplights. I'm well, just kidding. No. But that's how it would operate. So he said, hey, bring me the ephod. I want, I want to ask God something. So he went and he asked. He, he, asked, he says, so Abiathar brought the ephod to David. David inquired of the Lord, saying, shall I pursue this band? Shall I overtake them? And he said to him, pursue. Give him a green light. Hello, somebody. Pursue. For you will surely overtake them, and you will surely rescue all. I have, oh, you surely rescue all. God says, go for it. And you guys know the story about that. He goes after them. He got all the men. He says, no, God just spoke. And he says, hey, let's go and, and rescue our families. So they go to a certain town. They find the enemy. Now, this is, this is cool. They find the enemy, and so they come together and say, we're going to get them. So they come down. They start running. The enemy starts running. So they come in, and they rescue their sons, their daughters, their wives. Everybody is alive. They didn't hurt anybody. They get everybody there. And all of the stuff that the enemy had taken from them, from their town, before they burned it, they, it was there. They had gold. They had silver. They had everything else. So they took everything that belongs to them, and guess what? This is what I like. They, they found, they found piles of good stuff, gold and other things that the enemy had. And David and his men took it as plunder and took it to their city and blessed everybody with it. And gave to everybody and they kept a lot for themselves from the enemy. Now, no, 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 no. This is, this is the key right here. I thought about it for a minute. I said, where did that enemy, where did that enemy, where did that enemy get all the stuff that they had? Because it didn't belong to David and them. They took it from somewhere else. 
and they kept it. And God spoke to me and says, you know, you know whose stuff that was? It, was? it was from other individuals that were unwilling to fight for the stuff that the devil was taking from them. The stuff that the devil, that the enemy had piles of was from cowards that didn't want to fight to get theirs back. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. But I, I, wa I want to recover everything that the devil has tried to take from me. Come on now. I don't want him showing something that belonged to me. And say, look, but he didn't come to fight for it. Ah! I want to be able to say, hey, I want to bless you with this. I want to bless you with that. Where did you get it from? I took it from the devil. I took it from the enemy's camp. And he had it. It doesn't even belong to me. But I took it together with the VO Santa Rosa and VO International. We went and we took it back because it belongs to God's people. Come on, somebody need to give him praise. Come on, give him praise. Hallelujah. You can remain standing. Don't go anywhere, please. Keep them moving around to a very minimum. I want, I want to pray. I want to pray that this faith that don't allow you to give up will be a part of your life and my life. That we don't give up and we won't give up when things get difficult. Listen, 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 listen. This is the part I want you to listen. Faith. Years ago, I was in the city of Oakland and we were ministering, handing out flyers, inviting people and, and I felt God speaking to me. I saw this man on the, on the curve there in one of the dirty streets in Oakland, East Oakland. This man was laying down on, on the curve, dirty, drunk. God, go, to, go talk to him. Go minister to him. So I went. I got closer to him. I gave him a flyer. He was sitting down. He had a bottle. He was drinking. All dirty. He looked up. I was on fire. I said, hey, you know what? God created you, man. And he's got a greater plan than what, what's going on right here right now. God has a plan for your life, man. And I started giving him my testimony years ago. This is what I was doing. What I was doing. And God changed my life, man. And I, I ministered to him. And he looked up to me from the floor where he was laying down and he and he says keep that excitement young man he says i used to be just like you on fire for god and i don't know if he was saying the truth or not at the time and i said well you gotta get back up man you gotta no man I'm okay. I'm good. You don't believe me that I used to be on fire for God, huh? And I said, yeah, I believe you, man, but it's time to get back up. Look where you're at right now. God is still good. God still loves you. And he said, you don't believe me. And he reached to his back pocket. He was laid down. Reached to his back pocket. Assemblies of God credential as a pastor. A pastor on a curve in a dirty place. What happened to you? How did he end up there from here? I think that Paul brings it very well when he says, he talks to the people and then he talks about, he says, I have fought a good fight. I have fought a good fight. I finished the race. And I have kept the faith to the very end. There's a lot of things that are trying to steal your faith and take your faith. The word that the Apostle Paul uses when he says, I have kept the faith, is as a football player that is protecting the football as he's running when everybody else is trying to make him fumble it or lose the ball. The, the word, I kept the faith, meaning I protected my faith with everything that I had. I protected it. I made sure that I walked my life with faith in nothing. Not the world, not money. Come on now. Not the opposite sex, not power, not prestige, not position. Nothing was going to take my faith. I kept the faith and I run with the faith. And I didn't allow anybody to take it from me. I didn't allow the devil. I didn't allow the world. I didn't allow my flesh to take this away from me. I kept them to the end. 
I wonder how many of us as we lift up our hands in the presence of God. I wonder how many of us say, man, I, I need to keep this faith to the very end. I need to keep this faith to the very end in my life. And you're willing to go the extra mile. And you're willing to persevere. And you're willing to allow God to do what He wants to do in your life. And I want to say God has so much more reward for you and I. The Bible says when God comes back, will He find faith on the planet Earth? Come on, Christians. We are the people of faith. we got to step it up. If it's you today, if it's you today and you say, I want to I wanna persevere. I want God to just inject me with this this faith to begin to resurrect my faith or increase my faith or operate at this great level of faith to believe God for the impossible in my family in my life if it's you today at whatever level of faith that you find yourself in today even if you are new here and you don't know Jesus today is your day to exercise the measure of faith that God has placed inside of you there's some faith inside of you to respond to a message like this and getting closer to God. We're going to sing this song and we're going to allow you. I'm going to welcome you. I'm going to invite you. Come forward right over here on the altar. 